form. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up, for general information. Oh, um, today's election day, so if you haven't voted and you're interested, the polls are still open for the primaries. Um, vote for the selection of your choice. Um, and because it's election day, we can't have any public hearings, so this is just going to be information only today. No um, decision on anything particularly. Um, Rick Ramucci. Ramucci? Yep. Yes. Good evening. Um, Rick Ramucci in uh, Mike Weinzick, Weinzick Nursery. Um, I was in to see Tim Nyhard last week to pull a permit on some work that we want to do over at the nursery. Okay. Do some upgrades to a building. He thought maybe I should just swing through here first to get your blessing. Um, it's just kind of a little narrative to what we're, what we're planning on doing. A couple of pictures. Basically, it was an old three-car garage with some signage. Um, that's going to be the stand, or that the building out back? That's the building out back. Okay. Yep. Right. Building set set off the road. Okay. Quite a bit, maybe 300 feet. Okay. Um, basically, we want to kind of update, remove the three garage doors, put in a big walk door with a couple of windows, kind of make a parapet wall for the signage just to get the, the gutters off the front of the building and then uh, create a pergola over the front and a little covered area here and then eventually remove the, the little pay stations they have so you'll be able to come up underneath this covered area go to a window right at the side of this building so we're just kind of utilizing the old building um, kind of some color choices that we thought about was the, the red kind of on the gables and the front here gray with just white trim this is for the ever uh, for the nursery part of agricultural. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you're you're exempt from site plan approval for that. Okay. We thought maybe just come over here. Yeah, no, that's fine. We yeah. appreciate let us know what's going on yeah, just yeah. so that people you know, ask what, what nine, yeah. Kinda, you exactly. Know. Yeah, okay. that's fine. All right. Um so you're not increasing the size of the building at all? Just this covered area, okay. which is open. Okay. Right now we're almost nine hundred square feet. This is a ten by twenty area, two hundred square feet of openness. Okay. Um you know, just with, with two footings, not a, a full foundation okay. by any means or anything. But just to kind of clean up the front. Yeah, no, um, that um, that's definitely looks okay. much nicer. Okay. Any questions, anybody? Comments? Where is this located exactly? Weinstein Nursery, right up. Yeah. About a yeah. thousand next feet up the Legion. Yeah. 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 Right next to the Legion. Right, the other side of the Legion. Across yeah. from the Rock Gym. And yes, yes like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and this would be back? It, it is, yeah, it's an existing building set back 300 feet off the road. So you can't see it unless you pull in. You can see it from the road, yeah. but it's it's set back pretty good. You can you can see it, but you got to kind of know what's there to look exactly, for it to yeah. see it. Yeah. yeah. So basically, there's already kind of a sign up front here. You know, the key is to you know kind of put it up here. Maybe some lights, um, but that'll be another. You know. Are those doors? Is the front facing east or is it facing south? The this this here is facing Route Nine. Okay. So, so this is this is south. west, okay. and then east gotcha. is going up towards okay. towards Amherst. Um, nice. So this will the sign be visible with the overhang? It will be. It'll be up, you know, kind of in this area here. This the way it is now, um, and a pergola kind of sits at that roof, you know, right above the doors. Just don't put it higher up on the roof because it's pre-existing non-conforming sign. And yep. Roof signs are not allowed. So. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Does, yeah. does that apply to if it's agricultural exemption? Yes. Yes, okay. it does. It applies okay. to everybody. The signs. Have, okay. Signs apply to so, everybody. So now. Uh, only back lighting. Yeah, so yeah, light. it'll, you know, some nice carriage yeah. lights kind of thing. Um, right now there's a couple of spotlights, but we kind of want to make it look appealing. Um, Go snakes. Exactly. Yeah. You know, just kind of something up there. Um, well, that building's been there forever, right? It has been. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been added on a little bit, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Just kind of. So is this going to be a new kick, a new revitalization of? It, I mean, just. Upgrading so that we can have a POS system that we don't have to bring inside every day, keep it under weather, give it in, get more, um, pro add in more product lines. You're going to get more new employees? Yeah, I've started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to start using that drainage ditch, ditch for irrigation now that it's filled up? Yeah, Danny, hopefully. Danny, Danny, Danny. Danny. Okay. All right. So Tim was just kind of looking for your nod to before okay. I fly yeah. over there. So um, okay. 
you don't even need me. We don't even need to give. We're really give a piece of paper, but I mean, you're. Okay. If he has any questions, just have. I'll, I'll, I'll probably see him tomorrow anyway. Okay. All right. I'll be here tomorrow. Else. To yeah. Apply for this permit. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. Good Thank luck. You. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Sun. Sun run. Yep. Okay. Solar. Yep. Actually, let's put you yeah, off to the. Oh, are you, this is for the uh, administrative administrative review. review. Yep. Okay, okay. Let's well, let's get everybody else, and we'll get to you when they're done. Okay. Um, Marilyn and Julius Gunderzik. Gunder. Yeah. Oh, this is for the accessory apartment. It is. Uh, okay. So that's the application. Um, that is an affidavit saying they're going to be living in the place and seven copies of the plan, the plot, and print. And the mailing labels. And the mailing envelopes. Or a mailing envelopes. Okay, just see that. What's the address? Oh, three. 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 Metal. three. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. Where did the numbers start? Did they start from Maple Street or at the other? Uh, it's the second house in on the left uh, from Maple Street. Okay. Actually, it's the first house. The, the, the one on the corner is actually okay. commercial. That's the um, community assistant living. community yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. Assisted living. Assisted, assisted, assisted living. or whatever. Is that your yeah. Um, April 7th? Uh, probably, because we're going to be meeting with PVPC at our next meeting, uh, second meeting of March. So right. They're not going to be ready for anything on that thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So what's the process from here? Show up on, well, you'll take this with a, and pay the uh, town clerk with, uh, probably take one of these with you. So we just scheduled your public hearing for uh, Tuesday, April 7th. Yes. At 645. April 7th. Yeah, I'm going to mark it right on your under here so you can have it. Okay. Take this with the with the check pay with the town tell the town clerk with the, with these forms. Yep. Give it to her and show up on April 7th. That's it. That's yeah. it. Okay. Meanwhile, we will send out the legal notices to the abutters. Got it. And we will publish a legal notice in the newspaper. Okay. And so, and then when you come, you just explain what you're going to do. Yep. And if any neighbors come and have questions, you get to address those. Okay. Yes. We won't need to bring anything else. With no, us because here. we'll have these. How okay. much is the check for? Pardon? You said check? Uh, yes, 325. 325. They're not for us to each have one to review, or is that? If you want one, I can give you one. Would that have to be copied? Um, no. I think I, I can give them five votes. I, uh, I think that'll be I can drop that I can make copies downstairs. At some point. Just some point this, <coughs> this week or, or beginning of next week. Yeah, as long as that paid before this April 7th, that's yeah. all it has to be. Okay. Okay. So we're all set. Oh, and the other thing is you will uh, bring. Do you have another set of the, the drawings? <coughs> I gave you seven. You gave us seven. Yep. What do you need a set for? To leave with Jessica. She they had she has one set to leave okay, with Jessica. Full set. Okay. She has a full set to leave with Jessica. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. Because when the neighbors come in to look at the plans that are at the town clerk's office and if they aren't there, we get a call from the town clerk. Yep. You don't think they're gonna need some kind of three D rendering of the front or anything like well, that or are you gonna do it? Are you adding on to the house? Yeah. Okay. To the right side. Then set way back. Though. You should have a rendering of what the house will look like with the addition. Okay. I can okay. Do that. And it can be, you know, elevation, right? Yeah, it, uh, right. Uh, Two, uh, an elevation yeah. view of the, of the front of the house. It doesn't have to be a 3D okay. computer yeah. model. No problem. Okay. If your builder can do a 3D, yeah. a lot of them can. Well, I'm the builder. He's the oh. builder. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, Mr. Quinlan. Yes, I'm here. We were discussing when we started, mm -hmm. we opened the meeting, the meeting right. well, and we all want to get this resolved. Right. Well, I guess hey, uh, Berkshire Design didn't forward this to uh, Chris. 
the uh, email that he sent you guys back uh, October 28th. Okay. Saying that, you know, everything met the requirement. So, what? Randy did the as built. Yeah. And then he then Chris said, well, Randy did the as built, then they wanted all the water, everything on right. it. So Randy did all that. Then he said he wanted this, you know, well, I need proof that the road was done, you know, right. right. So, I had Berkshire Design do that. So. so as far as we know, I, I am scheduled to sit down with Chris maybe later this week or next week. Okay. <clears throat> as far as we know, he actually has everything that we have. But he seems, and this is where it gets a little unclear, he seems to think that we need something more than we have. Um, and I'm not quite sure whether he's basing it, we, what, what you have given us has always been enough in the past to satisfy DPW. Um, we don't know why Chris isn't satisfied. I, I, what I don't know is whether it's just they didn't do it that way at his last job, but I, I or... The first time I talked to him, he said, that, you know, the drainage wasn't working and all that. So I went down and I said, and I took pictures. Yeah. The drainage worked fine. All the retention ponds were working fine. And then he says to me, well, maybe, maybe the engineering's done wrong. I said, well, I guess we have, you know, I got two stupid engineers and one that did it and one that uh, oversaw the project. So, so, I, and, so I, and, and after uh, that, I did all this, and now I honestly, I, I don't know what he wants. I had understood that either Berkshire Design or someone from Bacon Wilson was going to contact him directly. Yeah. Well, you... You talked to Peter McConnell, right? He did I haven't talked to him. I did get an email from one of his associates with the legal description of the property. Okay, but so that's okay. That was okay. Oh, that's that's been forwarded to town council for final approval. Um, but other than that, I don't know what the outcome was of Peter talking to Chris. Um, so. Well, Randy was supposed to talk to Chris too. So. Okay, and I have, don't have any feedback on that either. Okay. But uh, I am supposed to sit down with Chris about this and uh, about some other things. And I said I wanted to talk about this too. Okay. So um, we, we we should get something. And meanwhile, I'm just going to leave the that placeholder on the agenda. Okay. So uh, I will let you know if anything's coming up. But it's just so that we can talk about it without. Uh, getting in trouble with open meetings. Okay. Well, I just, I, I don't know what else. Okay. I talk to my, I we'll, we'll try to get some more information. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. We're all working on it. Yep. Do our bylaws spell out what's required for the town to accept it? No. Our Wait. subdivision regs do. Okay. But Chris seems to think that there's something else required by DOT besides what our subdivision regs say. That's where I know some towns will require that you have like compaction testing on, on your base before you pave, and that would have been the test you would have had to done back when you installed it. And if that wasn't, you know, we don't have that. They're supposed to do a periodic check, you know, base compact and the two minutes concrete, two and two, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, no stumps left there, all those. So, um, yeah, so the. the the unknown is whether there is some, is there some specific DOT requirement that we don't know about. Um, the, uh, it just has been a while. We have not, uh, I think uh, Gooseberry Lane was the last road, subdivision road that was accepted in the ordinary course of things. And that was four or five years ago under the prior DPW director. And the director prior to him, I don't know if there were any roadways accepted back in the, um, maybe, maybe one. No, or, for the well, prior, the road. For the initial director, we never had one direct, we never had one accepted. No. Okay. So, what's and then Gooseberry. Hawley was a different issue because. Well, I know it was. But the, the, the subdivisions that are brought in by the developer who was asking town meeting to accept them, we've just had. We've only had a couple because we've just been shut down on subdivisions for years now. 
let, let's assume that there was a DOT requirement that we didn't know about and that the engineers didn't know about and the builder didn't know about and everybody moved forward in good faith. Uh, what do you do? Don't know. We'll have to find out. Cross that bridge. Well, we, well, we're, 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 we, may, we may be in there, but you know, we want to find out, is there a DOT requirements? I got a call to the DOT, but they're not calling me back. I got a couple into them. So, anyways. That's not, well, you, couldn't, you can't answer my question. No, okay. no, no. But Bill says we, we, we don't know. All right, Sun Run Solar. Yes. Yes, sir. You're up. We got no comments from anybody. Oh, the only comment we got is that uh, have you filed? You might be in wetlands. Have you filed a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission? No. You probably should. You might be in a borderline wetlands. Did you get a copy of that email from John Stone about this? No. Nothing about wetlands. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, we can. And we it would can, have come to me. We we can give you approval subject to them, but you won't get anything typed up from us until you go to see the Wet Conservation Commission and get that straightened out. Okay. Okay. How is that even? Can I see the plan? Yeah. There is. You see, this is your house, right? No, that's that's the proposed. That's the proposed that's field. The proposed field. Evidently, that's there's the there's a ditch someplace around here. I don't know exactly what she was talking about, but you may be in a wetland. It might be in more vegetated wetlands areas. What wasn't one of the issues that building was built without getting the building approval? No, I don't. And, I, and they think it was over something. I'm just trying to remember. All, all I remember there was yeah, a, a garage, potential garage potential garage wetlands place. issue. Yeah. Can I see? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Where's there's the a house smaller. There's a small one more close up right. Oh, okay, that's it. That's that's the field. That's the house right. Oh yeah. So the, yeah, the brook is here. It used to be going under here into a pond. What's the address? This kind of, uh, this uh, 15, Fifteen Stockwell, Fifteen Stockwell Road. Road. Does conservation have daytime hours or is it evenings or? Uh, Tuesday. In the morning. Tuesdays from like oh, eleven to two. <laughs> uh, so the conservation office is at the end of the hall. Yeah. Just go out and do a right, and she has her uh, hours posted. Okay. And you, on it. you can call her. Okay. Okay. Um, sure. And. and she can talk it over with you on the phone too. Actually, so, one. I don't think I had you, an email address for you. So do you? Have, I'll try to forward the. I don't have any cards. Well, I can write it down. Craig C R E I G. Dot O R N. O R O R N. That's my last name. O R N. Yep. That's Swedish. You would never know that to look at me, but it's Swedish. My dad's all Swedish. What was it? That's a Swedish. At Sunrun. Dot com. That's a Swedish thing, really? Yeah, yeah it is. It was ERN when my grandfather came oh, here from Sweden. Oh, okay. the, curse, the Swedish curse of E looked like R O. So oh, it became okay. O R N. Oh. Ern was eagle in Sorry. Swedish. He, he, told, he taught me all this many moons ago. All right, so as far as approval from you got, you folks, I'm we're good, just nothing in writing. We, we, like we, gotta, we just gotta make a we gotta go through the so go through the checklist. We go yeah. make a conditional upon conservation okay. approval. So yeah. interdepartmental review has okay, so this we is have received something stuck. Okay. Well so interdepartmental review, no replies. Um uh, we're on schedule for taking final action. We received the administrative, we received the required number of copies, site plan, um, specs. Um, okay, elevation drawings. That's not building really integrated. Um, you're a homeowner, so you, the, they're a homeowner, so that they will have the liability insurance. They do have site control. Um, you 
you've been you've notified the appropriate utilities. Mm -hmm. Always. Okay. Of course, you wouldn't well, get any more final things. Even if he has, he's not going to be sitting yeah. out there doing nothing to be right. asking. <laughs> yeah. And the company that actually sets the pins does a pretty thing with any of any anybody that digs in calls up if that's out there. I mean, it's out in the middle of a field. Land clearing. Do you just steal pins driven around? Yeah. Natural vegetation I, in the in the package. Right, I remember that. Yes. Yeah, I had given you. Yeah, because we haven't. Yeah, I mean, you know, structures in the plant. Yeah, solar foundations is the name of the company. We use actually national. We use solar foundations. I prefer that my sales folks didn't sell ground mounts. To be honest, you prefer before you prefer what? I would prefer they didn't sell ground mounts. Oh. Every time I do a ground mount, I'm in front of a pile oh. of fine gentlemen like yourselves. All the time. How many panels will it be? 20. Okay. And that's the other thing. It's such a small system. That's what about 6 kW? K, 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 uh, put it on the roof. The well, plug that depends on the exposure to the sun. Uh, yeah, you're pretty close, 5800. Okay. They've become quite a bit more efficient since I put mine on my house, my shed rather. What size panels you have on your house? I have, on my shed, I have 32 and I have 7.2 kW. Do you remember what the panels were? 260s? Two, how long ago did you do it? Um, seven years ago? Two. They're probably like 225s. I would say 240, 260, something like that. And now there's 385. Well, actually, we only go size 385s, but yeah. on the market, there's yeah, four I'm, 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 I'm going to be putting some more in my house pretty this summer, hopefully, or this fall. My son-in-law sells them, that's why. Oh, okay. His company sells them. Oh, that's great. So I get a good deal on them. So uh, yeah, the, um, this property used to be cleared. It was a pasture. And the farmer who owned it grew old. It grew up. Somebody bought it hoping to get it re-cleared. And the Conservation Commission would not let them restore this to what it was. So, uh, so that's why. Everybody so this was the. Oh, this turned out to be the only buildable lot. Who owned it? Art LaSalle? Uh, no. Um, uh, the. Um, oh, pulling a blank on the name. Uh, Fred Scott. Fred Scott. Yeah. Um, you don't have the North Hadley. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to find the project to satisfy the administrative review. Do have a second? Second. Pending. Okay. Pending Conservation, Conservation Commission review. Right. Yeah. We have a motion and a second? Second. Any, any other any other discussion? Comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Both it passes unanimously. So you now once once I've spoken to her. Then I get a well, well, once you've spoken to her, this is not a public hearing, there's not a special permit, this is just a simple administrative review. Right. Once you're done with conservation, you can go get your building permit. Perfect. Electrical permits, whatever you need. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Have a great Good luck. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Reedy, here I am. Come for a nice visit to us? Of course. Oh, Always good to see you. Welcome. Uh, this is the zoning amendment, that parking amendment. Oh, the parking amendment. I know amendment. you, okay. you were going to cover it and I think old business. So. Yeah. Whenever you get to it, I'm happy. We're ready. Ready for you. Right? Uh, so I forget when, maybe a month or so ago, I had uh, dropped off a proposed zoning amendment. This is for um, a change of zoning for, for parking in the industrial zone, industrial right. uses in the industrial zone. So um, I know you've got, a, you've got a placeholder on the town meeting warrant. Yes. So that, yep. um, and I guess I'm just here to see if you've got any comments on it, if you want me to do additional work. Research what okay. have you to just to I don't get remember all the I remember, I remember it was one parking space for forty thousand square feet of building. It's okay. um, one space per three hundred square feet of office space floor area. Okay. One space per ten thousand square feet of other floor area, which I've defined later as storage, manufacturing, processing, warehousing, garaging, or similarly used floor area, and one space for every employee on shift. Okay. 
and then it gives you the ability to wave that okay. up, down, or what have you. I would also, that those numbers after thinking about it are fine, but I would like to see an additional parking requirement, one parking space for each company vehicle relative to the size of the company vehicle. So I don't want to see an 18, a 9 by 18 parking space if they're going to have a dry van or an 18 wheeler or something like that. I, I, I want it worded so that if they have big rigs or big vehicles, they have a space for each vehicle. Okay. Um, and do you want it to be a dedicated space for those vehicles? Just, I think yeah. so the intent is so that you don't have these parking spaces that are supposed to go for something else, but they're using yeah. them for yes. these. Okay. Yes, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Because that pretty much would take care of most reasonable things that could occur. And you also got the weasel work. I call it weasel <laughs> words where we can always go require more. That's right. But I think that at least if somebody sees that, is, well, what is the planning board going to want more for? If they see it pretty much black and white, I mean, all right. I mean, how many uh, customers are they going to have? So, so, Usually so. few. Right. But you've got a parking space for, for employees. Yep covering quite a, quite a range of them, yeah. and for company vehicles. Yeah. Let's assume that Ideal Movers came before us 15 years ago and they had two moving trucks, the ones that they use standards, bigger, they're bigger than cars. Right. And they grow, and, we, and now they've got six moving trucks. How does this provide for that? That, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. I mean, we can only be, we, 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 we require reasonable now. things yeah. from what we're seeing. Okay. When you see something like that, you know, could the company grow? Yes. That's Are they going to grow? The point, that's the whole point of having a company. Hopefully, they right. grow. Right. Will they grow? I mean, with, with all the likelihood, I hope so. What we have, what we have for control on that is if they come back to us, the building, yeah. then we yeah. expand gotcha. the parking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If, if they're really doing well and they want to expand the building, yeah. we can gotcha. we yeah. can re-register gotcha. the number of vehicles at that point. Yeah. But will he have the room? Well. Those are all questions to be seen when they have to come back. That if they don't have the room, maybe they can't expand like that. Well, I mean, that has to be made perfectly clear because there's no question they're going to expand because the sun's involved in the business and there's going to be expansion. And look at Amazon with their little vans now. They're running <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. And who would have thought that was going to happen even three, four months ago? Are we going to call this the ideal movers zoning amendment? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's... But so no. we have to make them aware that this is pretty well locked in. They don't have a lot of wiggle room after that unless they have the space. Yeah, and I mean, I think so on this side of things, so when I approach this, I tried to do it as, yes, it was spurned by or the genesis was ideal movers, but trying to look at it sure. in a way that how can we apply it kind of townwide in these industrial zoning districts. And I think yeah. the advice to them specifically would be and make sure you have enough space or area if you intend to expand or think you're going to expand so that you can put additional parking spaces in there so you don't have to come back and get some sort of improvement. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think that's going to come down to, Joe, when we see the site plan, if they're at the limits of everything, right. they're going to pretty much lock themselves in. A lot of companies that come in, a lot of businesses that come into us have an excess of green space. Okay, so they have some room to expand a little bit reasonably. But if they're at, you know, 21% this and right in the limits of this and right in the limits of that, that's it. You're stuck. You, you want to expand, you can't. I can buy a Jason Brown. You know, and we just, we, you're right. We've got to make that, this, this is going to, we, we can't cover, we can't write a bylaw that covers everything. That's Even what we have today doesn't cover everything. I know. Yeah. So we simply got to make the people aware. When somebody comes in and they're at, you know, 21% green space, and such and such and such and such and such and such, and they're right at the limits of everything. That's it. You want to expand anything, you're, you've got to go look elsewhere. And I think so. we, we have it worded tightly enough so it's industrial uses in the industrial district. So yeah. that is, Hampshire Mall is not going to be able to use that for anything. Well, Mountain Forest Mall would be the ones that would try to use that. But they're not industrial. They're an industrial. That whole front, the whole triangle is an industrial zone. Right. But there's not, except for Rails Coffee, 
They are the, the Rails Coffee Roasters. They are the only industrial use I can think of in that whole area. Well, yeah. besides Part ideal, of, I mean, uh, other than ideal movers, maybe right. in the back. Right. Mark yeah. had a suggestion about the numbers, the parking numbers, last meeting. Yeah, I, I had noticed that the one space per 10,000 is basically an 80th of our normal two for one. But that's, you know, taking, I didn't bring that up, taking into account that we have other aspects, and that's not the only parking limit that's on top of the employee and right. that's, you know, so, and since we also have a what weasel <laughs> wording that we can adjust it. Um, and if we find that, you know, people start coming in and doing this and we're finding that we're, we're low, I guess we can always adjust yeah. that in the future. That doesn't have to go through town meeting if we change that, right? Yes, it does. It does. It does. Yeah, this is this is zoning bylaw, so any change okay. to that bylaw will require two thirds town meeting. Okay. But on the other hand, this is industrial use in the industrial zone. We are we don't have a ton of industrial zone. Um, most of what we have is pretty much built out, and where in other places where it's not built out, it's not accessible. Like, for example, from I mean, you may or may not know this, from the intersection of Mill Valley Road and Route 9, south of the bike path, all the way to the Amherst town line on Mill Valley Road from the bike path, it's zoned industrial. But 300 feet from Mill Valley Road towards the bike path, it's zoned agricultural residential. There's a state law that says you can't access industrial land across in agricultural residential property. So therefore, all that industrial land that's zoned, it's just sitting there as it has a word on it. Um, and except for this, for the stuff that's along South Maple Street, that's about the only place that's accessible. So it's like an industrial island. It's it's it. Exactly what it, but this was put in back in what sixty one, Joe? Approximately, yeah. and it was supposed to be industrial all the way to Mill Valley Road, but the. The people that lived on that road want to have the flexibility to put a house for their family members on that road on their farms. And we do not allow housing in the industrial district. So that was the reason for that little quirky. So and, and, and years later they put that by the state thing in there that you can't access across ag residential. So it's not landlocked. There is a narrow access there, there is an area of access off South Maple Street but you would have to go through the barns of the dairy farm that is there. In fact, I think they own the rest of the land anyway. So there is a potential development in their industrial commercial development at some point in the future if the farm were to decide that it was time to do other things, but it, um, it's limited. Yeah. And I'm also not sure how much of that land has been put in. Has any of that been put in six, in the APR? APR, Joe? It's you know? all in APR. Is a lot of it's in APR? A good amount of it is. <laughs> <laughs> so that, yeah. that takes care of yeah, a lot really of it, too. Yeah. 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 But you've got. How many units will there be for storage? Oh, boy. I don't know, Joe. Okay. Because we're going to say you're not going to get many visitors, but if they're smaller units and you have four or five hundred. Well, this is, no, I mean, that may, this is more climate control that he's yeah. after. Yeah. Well, they're. But there's, there's still quite a few, I think. Yeah, there, there's a few. I don't I don't remember how many. I could, let me see if I've got it in here somewhere. Jim, that's what you were talking about. The yeah, this is, this is, uh, this, check it for Yeah, the V, that's Mill Valley Road right there. Yeah. And there's, that's a 300 foot setback and all that's the bike path. So all that's zoned industrial. All of this is owned industrial along 116, right. but this is town of Amherst that doesn't have, you know, can't access it, and, and 116 is a non-access highway. And then there's, right, it's non-access, right. So, and you've got so the only place wetlands we, all around it. Yeah, this, this is almost all wetlands. Well, yeah. from about here to there, that's probably 75% wetland back yeah. there, so. Yeah, that was when, uh, again, 
little bit of history there. That wasn't wetlands when it was zoned. But the Route 9 draining into that area and a lot of the complexes has turned that into a wetlands. Well, town of Amherst. Town of Amherst. Drain down the hill. University Drive and a lot of mm -hmm. UMass has also contributed to that. Anyways. So quite a few. Um, 645 units is what, and so these are preliminary, what I had asked Brent to do, just give me some information, obviously it can change. But he says 645 units, and then, so that's the climate control building, and then he's proposed, he's gonna have maybe two single story buildings that have about 65 units. How many stories is the climate control building? Uh, three? three or four. Three or four? Three or four, yeah. Um, what are we limited to? How many we're, we're limited, limited to, in the industrial zone, we're limited by height, I think it's, yeah. 40 feet, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Industrial. Four stories and 50 feet in height. Okay. Maximums. Um, about a 40 by 40 single story office. Let's see what else. Size of the units range from 25 square feet to 300 square feet. He said most units will be small and mid sized. So. 50 square feet, 100 square feet, 150 square feet. So 700 units, there's got to be some uh, consensus somewhere. How many people visit per day? Yeah, let me. Some people visit them once a year, you know? <laughs> right. Well, that's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's the, the thing, I mean. You don't know. Yeah, he, he, this remember? is going to be a huge building, huge. Where, where is that going to be? On Mill Valley? Right on um, right bike, path. bike path, right next to it. Right next to where he has it today? Uh, no, if you know um, South Maple Street. Where the, where the sign is. Yeah, Smith's farm. Right, so yeah, so Gordy's, you know, he has that out parcel, I think he's four acres. Oh, he says oh, 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 oh says. Behind, across from Gordon Smith's house? From yes, Mr. Gordon's behind, behind his house. house. Across from, um, if you cross the bike path. Okay. Immediately to the east to the lace farm. Oh, okay. So right there, I forget the name of the market that's there, but right across the bike okay. path from that. Yeah. That's where it would go. Okay. Um, and I could, I'll ask, I'll find out what he anticipates, you know, what does he have for data? I think he's been taking, I asked him to take data from the existing site and his existing sites to say how many people visit, how many do you have, okay. and can we somewhat extrapolate? What, you know, what, what, what are the things that pass this on to him? Yeah. The drainage there is clay. Please. Virtually no drainage on site. When the farm no infiltration, you're saying? Yes. When okay. the uh, farm stand was a mill farm, Mill Valley Farm. Yes. No. Maple Farm. Maple Farm. Maple, Maple Farm, farm, farm was put in. It was originally put in by uh, Gleason Brothers. Gleason Brothers as a mover. They had a detention pond in the front. I believe. Oh, okay. Okay, that's, that's like that a little, pond now. Yeah. Where that's where the little pond is. Yeah. And it would fill with water and it was a pond. It never infiltrated. <laughs> and it was, would overflow onto the South Maple Street and otherwise if the rain was enough. They ended up running, because it was, it happened, it was, you know, nobody anticipated it would be that bad. Yeah. They ran a pipe from that drainage pond along South Maple Street into a ditch, I forget where the ditch is, to get rid of the water. We're not going to allow ideal movers to do that because that was a combination of mistakes of a bunch of people that was, yep. that was just gone. Yeah. So he's going to have to somehow, there's a lot of roof area yeah. and park and, 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 and impervious, impervious on this site. Yeah. He's going to have some serious drainage problems to deal with. So is this going? Okay. Across from the Goulet trucking? Yes. Across South is, Maple. Is this yes. MS4 yes. stuff? Probably. What? Yeah. What was yeah. the question? Like? MS4. MS4. Well, it, might, it, might be, it might be. Yeah. It might be. It might be. It might qualify for MS4. There's some there. I'm, just let, 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 uh, let no, 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 no. This is good to. Well, because the other, I, remember, the I know thing. that's that's really. Yeah. When it, when it, when it's dry, it'll soak up some water. Once yeah. it soaks up the water, that's it. It's it. It's no a water for it to go. It's yeah. it's yeah. Until it evaporates. Yeah, but we have seen we've seen creative solutions among right. other things. If right. you did 
dig down deep enough, you may get below the clay. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. and then, and I'm only I'm not saying that can't be done. I'm just right. saying to let Brett know it. that a simple little thing you could take isn't. Some, you could take some cores and see what's down there. Yeah, it sounds like some geotechnical yeah. investigations. Or the other thing, the water line as you cross the bike path going towards the intersection going south is seriously corroded in and has very little lumen left in it. Okay. So if he's going to have a lot of sprinkling systems, they may have to loop it all the way down the street. So okay. that's going to be a kind of a critical okay. point too because when Goulet's Ellet Farm had a fire there, they couldn't get any water, enough water. Okay. You're just saying the water pressure, or are you saying that the pipe is thin the because pipe it's is old. seriously so the water pressure can't. Okay. That's right. And there's some. Well, uh, yeah, the flow and the pressure is okay. not good there. So do we have a slot open on the town warrant for this article? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I got all the others pretty much straightened out. Our our Hadley Affordable Housing Trust Fund is going to go into Chapter 87 of the, zoning, of the general bylaws. Great. Oh, really? We're just going to reference it in the zoning bylaw? It, it's, it's going to be the words that we took out three years ago out of the zoning bylaw mm -hmm. are going back in. To the general bylaw. Or going the trust back fund is going to be a general bylaw yeah. word general bylaw law the words are going to go back into the uh zoning bylaw to allow donations into the trust fund great but we need to what we need to work out is the formula sure i will send you i put together something i sent around today uh but i'll send that to you okay just some random other communities yeah 85 percent of each building lot each building lot. <laughs> we'll go into the trust fund. Wait, each building lot, not, not just. <laughs> I think I'm going to get it. Yeah, I thought you meant just the affordable ones. And I was like, wait, yes. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so these actually come all one, over one the. Cup, cup, oh, no, you can keep it. Thank you, though. Yeah, okay. I'll, keep I'll get it from Bill Electronic. Uh, Look at my jaw. Hold on, let me get it. Uh, you know, one. Uh, one community in here, and I forget which one it is, was uh, just said uh, two hundred thousand dollars per unit. Wow! Oh, uh, that is Norton. Calculation of fees for the purposes uh, of the eastern part of the state. By, I've got a Cremona Farms there right now that I'm, that town is having some problems. Uh, right by Mansfield, right on oh, four ninety five. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, oh yeah. Okay. For, for, for purposes of this bylaw, the fee in lieu of construction or provision of affordable units is determined to be two hundred thousand dollars per unit. Holy oh my! Yes. And I know Amherst had one that they it, it failed at town meeting. Maybe you should take a look at that language, but I think it, it was something like that that made it prohibitive, essentially, where the developer said, "We can't do anything because you want." all of this extra money. And I think yeah. ultimately they're going to work, I think Amherst is going to work through well, it to make Am it an incentive. Am Amherst has something in their bylaw. Yeah. Uh, the fee and lieu value for each affordable okay. unit not provided shall be three times the current median family income for Amherst as determined right. by... So, that's, so with the, for the Springfield Metropolitan District, I think it's like $54,000. So you're talking about $160,000 just for... Uh, do they, Payment in lieu. Do, do they include students in that calculation? No. Yeah, yes. Uh, so affordable, what you would have oh, to... Oh, in the median income. Yes, the median income. Yes. Yes. Oh, they, they can do. vote. I think they got included. Probably. So... Uh, well, we don't see many of them qualifying for affordable. You know, so what you have to do if you actually... Matter. Oh, right. But I'm just saying for those people mm -hmm. who actually so, can rent, right. students aren't those. For 2019, the median family income estimate for the Springfield Metropolitan Statistical Area is $76,000. So they're not even doing 80% of that. They're saying the entire, the 100%. That's what Amherst Three times 100% of that. That's $210,000. That's, 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 that's 300 grand. Unbelievable. No. Um, yeah. Three times 80, three times 80 would be two, 340. Where do you live? No, I, I live in South Adley. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
We know what we're doing. We're, we're Hadley, South Hadley. 240, Amherst. So uh, Boylston uses something similar to what we settled on. Uh, financial contribution shall be equal to the difference between the average market sales price for the market rate units and the purchase price affordable to a uh, four-person low-income oh, household. That's okay. I mean, that makes that has some grounding in that makes sense. some reality. Yeah, these yeah, other ones are just if, if you sell to them, numbers. this is what you're going to sell to them. Right. So therefore, right. in the development, the thing is like the development costs are the same regardless of if you're doing market rate or affordable. So that's where the rub comes in for developers. And one of the things to think about is incentivizing developers by giving them maybe additional density for doing these affordable units somehow. Because I think, you know, you're at, you want to stay above 10% if you can continue to go above 10%. I mean, it might be enough just to say, you do any development, you have to provide it. I know with your subdivisions, what is it, more than seven six, lots? More, more, six, seven, yeah, seven or more. Seven or more, then you have to provide it. You, know, you might want to think about, if you start to teeter, how to incentivize those developers so that they can get more units, you can keep up your quota, and then you can't have a 40B project. What's the magic number in that range? I know there was some question about North Alley Hall and the adjacent ball field land. Sutherland has some small land, but they, the developers wanted to put 12 units in, in like one building. Uh, is there any magic number? I, I, I think the North Hadley Hall would be the most expensive affordable housing in Hadley. No, if you tear it down, I'm talking tear oh, down tear North Hadley yeah. Hall, they would want, so that's my hypothetical question. So and I would, so it should be a builder, not a lawyer. Yeah, a no, but I've been, so Barry's done a couple of, Done 70 University Drive in Amherst. That's about a boy, a uh, 10,000 to 11,000 square foot footprint times three, so about 30,000 square feet total. He has 36 units in that altogether, 60 bedrooms. Of those, four are affordable. But just to give you a little bit of breakdown of, you know, and I can't do math quickly enough to tell you what that is, there's another project that's working its way through the zoning board now that is about the same 12,000 square foot footprint. Um, it'll have 4,700 square feet of commercial space and then 45 either studio or one bedroom units and that's same thing three stories. So that's, that's about, so that'll have 45 beds. Um, I think it depends, for those types of projects, it depends on the footprint. If you want something more like East Street Commons, I think that's like an eight acre, nine acre site maybe. And I, they're close together, I think closer than maybe Barry would have liked them to be. Yeah. Um, and there are 35 units there with that infrastructure in the middle. So just to put it, so that's eight acres, 35 units. But I, the answer is it, it depends. Yeah. Okay. All so, right, so I've got my marching orders for this. I'll, I'll modify it as you suggested and I'll send it to that planning email address. I'm here on the 7th, uh, 24th. Anyways, because Esalon was continued to that date. Yeah. Um, so I'll have this to you probably in the next couple of days, and then if you yeah, want to talk about then, it more yeah, then. If, if, it, if it is what we wanted, then I would just, I'll just give it to the administrator okay. according to the warrant. Perfect. When's your meeting with the Conservation Commission? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Okay. Do, you yes. want, do you want the planning boy to attend? <laughs> you want my real answer? <laughs> uh, yeah, and so uh, Berkshire's Grill has been taking the lead on that. Um, I think Mark has been he's been active. Uh, I don't know that he's spoken with anyone from DOT yet. I think Mark is just over from Jeff. Uh, no, um, Mark Kraus. So the Jeff, owner, the owner, yeah, the owner of Vesselon. Oh, okay. I think he's been active. I think he's been doing some things on the common. I think he loaned it because um, there might have been some ruts there. I think you've been talking to Tom well, Weinzig. They all over it. Yeah, they yeah, really are so. wonderful. Um, so we've identified a couple of different things. I think we've talked about one. I mean, it real to me, it is identifying the parking on that new site, you know, maybe taking down that dilapidated structure in the back completely, uh, dedicating, I think we've got maybe 30-something spaces on that site as overflow parking. and. You know, I, I've asked him to look at it holistically because I think that's the way the board's looking at it, the town's looking at it, the DOT's looking at it. If there's one way to just say, 
Yes, they're separate, as you had pointed out last Not time. Not only do you talk well, but you listen well, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my wife. She doesn't know that. <laughs> because that was, you know, obviously the neighbors are going to come chir chirping. Yeah, Tom, to, to, Tom and Pete both defend their clients very well. That's but, however, they have also both have been, are and have been very reasonable on listening to comments. Yeah. Thank you. I learned it from McConnell. And I just, on that, um, on Quinlan's thing, I sent Peter an email as I was listening to everybody talk and said, have you talked to Chris yet? Or, you know, what's the story with this? Just so, and then I can send you an email and let you know. We, we want to find out what's required anyways, because right. I mean, if, 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 if we're missing something, let us know so we can make sure that we don't have to go through this again. I mean, I feel probably for, sorry for poor Tom. He's doing what he can, but it, it's like something's missing. Well, we just want to know what. Right. And if it's not, that's fine too. Right. So we, we thought we had it all resolved when we said, you know, we build the last lot, of, and then it must go to the town meeting, and it'll be out of our hair. Yeah. It's not that easy. No, it doesn't seem like it. No. Okay. Okay. Good seeing you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. See you soon. So, what I was going to say, I will send uh, this to Tom. I'll also send it to Ken. Call okay. me and ask him if he has any okay. better ideas. All right. Um, and this was not really very, very scientific. I just went sort of bouncing around. There's a state website that has uh, local bylaws and zoning bylaws for many communities. Okay. So I just bopped through it and picked out a few almost at random. But where, where, where did you find the complete Waitley Housing Trust? Because it was, didn't you find the document that was voted on? Uh, no, okay. I didn't. I, thought you did. I didn't go looking for that. Okay. I must have had the original one. I thought there was a little addition to it. Um, so, you know, you can take a look through this for what it's worth, and they're, they're all over the place. There are percentages. Some of them are, yeah, they're designed to be prohibitive. Um, you know, $200,000 a unit, that's, um, or 65% of the average price being asked for the market rate units in the applicable development. Or 85% of every site is... Jim said. Uh, that, that is, that really sort of <laughs> is in here. You yeah. Three times the median income. Um, I, had, I went through and I, when I sent the PDF to you, I highlighted this and my printer is running low on ink, so yellow came out orange, but. Uh, well, clearly if they, they're serious about what they're saying, then they're trying to encourage the developer to build and not contribute. They are. <laughs> But uh, it's interesting, some of these did specifically talk about, they had a formula in there, and they went into more detail than we did about, as you apply, you have to have a plan for marketing the units, and you have to have a contract with an agency. And uh, Belmont, for example, said that the, uh, uh, you use the Belmont, Belmont Housing Authority, or, or well, some of them uh, use the city housing authorities which makes a lot of sense, except we couldn't do it. Ours wouldn't play. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, uh, we can look through it. I don't, I don't think it needs to be discussed at length um, right now. But, um, but there's, there's stuff out there, and it's all over the place. There's no... Uh, I don't think there is one, there are no two alike in here. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Tim Brennan's letter. Okay. Um, oh, yes. As uh, you know, uh, we learned that uh, Tim Brennan, who recently retired as the chair of the Pioneer, as the executive director of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, is facing some health issues. Um, so I put together a brief letter. Uh, Dear Tim, we at the Happy Planning Board want to express our appreciation for the invaluable assistance you have extended to all of us in our work for the town, both officially through your role as Executive Director of PVPC and unofficially as one more I vote on our zoning articles at the end of a long night. We also wish, want to extend our support to you as you tackle the health challenges you now face. Please be secure in knowing you have made a difference. 
You want to say, and as a great citizen of Hadley? No. Is, no. <laughs> nope. I, uh, I think we, if, if everyone is comfortable with that language, yeah. I have it set up for all of us to sign it. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to sign the letter. I would second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. And Mark, I know you didn't have a lot of contact with Tim, but no. a lot of what you are working with is something his, his that legacy. Yeah, it's attributable to him or to other people in PVPC mm -hmm. under his direction. And he lived in lives in Hadley, so still does. Still does. So yeah. we. Uh, and I've been to a few PVPC meetings in 2019. To you know, as he was preparing about the door to hear. Num numerous people sing his praise, so I've I've heard a few of his stories. He, he's a down to earth guy. Okay, I got a note. I have a invoice from the Gazette for the legal notice for Mr. Uh, Michelson's um, accessory apartment that's scheduled for um, 17th of March. It is for one hundred ninety nine dollars and thirty six cents. I have a motion to pay it. So moved. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Tom mentioned a few minutes ago he's going to be here on the 24th. We're not, are we? Yeah, that wrong. Uh, he, uh, yeah, he probably just had it wrong. Okay. Uh, what is the, what is our next? I can't think of anyone who would screw up dates. 17th. 17th. Two weeks from tonight. Bill and I will be meeting with our finance committee on the 12th, right? Uh, no. It is... Yes, the 12th. Yes, the 12th. To talk about our budget and... Well, actually, it's just a routine budget meeting. There's nothing special about it. But every once a year when, they, when the finance committee goes through the budgets, everybody, every department gets invited to review their budget. And because we're asking for a little bit more money this year, uh, we want to make sure we go and explain why it's being requested. We are doubling the amount that we're going to be asking for PVPC. Tim, last night at the CPA meeting, someone asked me if the planning board was made aware that they wanted to extend the dike in Hadley down Bay Road to surround the business district. They've been talking about that for a few years. There are no plans to do that. Okay. Well, to me, FEMA wouldn't allow you to do oh, it. Oh, they, you realize what they have to do oh, to get that God. extended? They have no idea. Why? I mean, I, you, you, you talk about compensatory storage. That's right. It, it would go, oh, I, I, I couldn't imagine what it would be. The downstream impact on that? Well, any time you add... You, well, you cannot add to anything in a floodplain. You can take away a little bit, but you add, and their reasoning is if you build a, a berm or a dike in Hadley, it's going to deflect the more, more water to the north Hampton. Yeah. Or, or especially downstream, like yeah. you said. Yeah. It's, 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 I, yeah, I mean, I, okay. I, I can't imagine. I they, they, they talked about doing that. They talked about looking at that for at least three years, okay? Like we just said, that would, said be, that would be that that would be an insurmountable climate change. Just look at what the cost cost benefit ratio is for that. It's, there isn't there, any. There's no. not. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I just can't fathom that that would ever go anywhere. Hey, when we're on the floodplain, you know what the marker indication is on Russell School that little brass. I don't I don't know what the yeah, number it's right is. Yeah, above sea level. How much? What's the number? Wait, it's like what the number? 16 feet or something? No, it's more than that. It's going to be 125. Well, it's going to be a ballpark. It's not 300. No, it's just about, I'm, I'm going to guess it's about 100 and I'm going to guess. 
It might be as much as 130. One, no, I was in the because 125 is is the this le level in this area of the floodplain, and the Hopkins parking lot to the rear of what used to be the gym was at 125 feet. This is well above that. Bill looking well, it doesn't it necessarily indicate what the floodplain level is because they've uh, subtracted well, a couple of feet because of the flood control dams up north. Yeah, so it does that's reduce. The height, it's the height above sea level. Well, no, it is the height above sea yeah. level, but let's say it's 125 where the flood of 36 oh. or 38 was. They've reduced it a little bit because the flood control dams would make the 100-year flood of record lower than it was at 36 and 38. So the um, um, the elevation at Northampton Airport is 122 feet above sea level. One twenty. One two two. Okay. Hmm. I think that's it. One twenty. Little five feet higher. Really, more speed, but sure. Yeah, Mark, when I was at Point. Yeah. Right outside the uh, back. Yeah. The the, the was it the south. West corner of the building. Right. Sitting right on yeah. the, 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 the uh, step. No, sure the, the, the marble, the granite step. Mm -hmm. the, the, the window. There's a window right there. I seem to remember when I worked at Westover, I thought that the air traffic control tower had a, somewhere on it had a 200 something foot line. It might. Well, there's also there's another one of those in North Hadley someplace. Bill, Bill was talking about that once upon a time. Yeah, Randy said it too. I don't know where it is, though. Anybody have anything else? No. Motion to adjourn. Second. Nothing else? Yeah, nothing else. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John.